Over 200 years ago, three miles off the coast of Portsmouth, HMS Invincible, a warship commandeered from the French, ran aground and sank. Along with its treasure, it's remained here in the Solent ever since, until now. As a team of archaeologists, academics, ex-servicemen and volunteers have been able to unearth some incredible artefacts thanks to a £2 million grant from money paid in fines by banks caught up in the LIBOR scandal when several prominent ones were fined for manipulating the interbank borrowing rates. Archaeologist Dan Pascoe has been on board the mission since its inception. Well, the Invincible was a very special ship. She was originally French and captured by the British, and she went on to influence the design of British warships. Why is it such an important find? Well, the ship itself is such a, an amazing design, but also the contents within it. You've got 500, 600 men on board. You've got to feed them, you've got to clothe them, all the guns on board. You've got all the rigging, all the sailing. It's like a floating community. Why has this only been worked on now? The Invisible is not a new discovery. It was discovered by local fisherman Arthur Mack in 1979. We don't have another 20 or 30 years. Because this sandbank has moved over the site, we've got a limited period to rescue this material. So today behind me, a team of divers are sandbagging the submerged site in order to keep it intact and preserve it and hopefully discover more gems just like they've got on board the Avon. Here is a what we call a rammer head, and this was used to ram down the charge and the, and the cannonball. How much work have you done to clean this up? Because that looks brand new. Absolutely nothing. So this is a what we know is a pulley block, and we think this was used also with the guns, and it would take eight men to move them, so they use blocks and tackle. So this is what we think is a broom. Well, you can see here perfectly which part was buried and which part was exposed. Yeah. What I can't get my head round is wood that has been underwater, has come out so preserved. It's the sand and the mud that creates this anaerobic environment. So it is locking it, it's sealing it in time. Divers Damien and Giles are the men responsible for bringing up the artefacts. You've got a little glint in your eye. You love this job, don't you? Yeah, this is something completely different, very interesting. You've got to be careful, delicate, and it's um, very rewarding. You do a massive double take when you start um, moving the sediment because it's normally quite thick clay. You think, well, what's that? And so, you say it's like a button appears. You look at it and go, well, is that, is that a modern button? Is that just appeared there by accident? Like, no, it's not. It's, it is one from the wreck. It's a very special moment. Here you can see one of the buttons from one of their uniforms. And on the, on the other side of it, it's got the maker's name of Nutting made in Covent Garden, so in London. So we know where it was made. Jessica Berry is heading up this amazing programme. We got the uh, funding last autumn from money taken from the banking scandal. So it's a good thing then in terms of sort of bad money or something deemed as corrupt as going into our heritage? Absolutely. Once we have uh, conserved it and recorded it in pool, um, it'll be brought back here for the world to see at the National Museum of the Royal Navy. I've got a very special object here. Wow. A wine bottle still oh, with the cork wine. in it. There still will be fluid in there. It won't taste very nice. To you, it's a priceless. Absolutely price, absolutely priceless. I wouldn't, couldn't possibly put a price on it. I've seen some awesome artefacts today, and I've got to say, I think it's brilliant the way they're using the funds to preserve this country's maritime history. Mm -hmm.